Hi, chemistry students. Today we're going to learn how to calculate average atomic mass, <clears throat> which is the mass that's listed for each element on the periodic table. So, if you wanted to calculate the mass of an atom, you have to remember atoms are very, very tiny. So a tiny unit is needed to express the mass of an atom or a molecule. One atom, uh, one atomic mass unit, is the unit we would use, and that's equal to one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So one U is equal to, in grams, 1.66054 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Tiny, tiny amount. Now, the trick about calculating average atomic mass is that there are many isotopes for each element. You should remember isotopes are atoms of the same element, but they have differing numbers of neutrons and therefore different masses. And most elements have several isotopes, each having a different mass. And the masses listed on the periodic table are actually weighted averages of all those isotopes. <clears throat> So you must know how to calculate, uh, or you need to know how to calculate average atomic mass. And to do that, you must know how abundant each isotope is. And this will be given to you as a percent. And this is stuff that we've figured out over uh, the years of doing research. We've looked at um, different all the different elements. We've seen how abundant, how common each isotope is in the Earth's crust or in the Earth's atmosphere or whatever. And so the abundance is always given as a percent. So we'll say something like, of the all the carbon atoms we've ever tested, 98% um, of them are carbon-12, carbon with a mass of 12, or something like that. So you figure out the abundance of each isotope. You multiply the mass of each isotope by the abundance. But of course, you have to write that percent as a decimal. And then you add those numbers up. And that's all there is to it. So. I've got a fun little example that I usually use at school. I'll hand out cards to students and I'll say, let's pretend that instead of giving you your test grade for the last test, I'm gonna give you the class average. So I hand out cards that have the scores for each student on the test. And I'm making it up and I tell them I'm making it up and it's all pretend, it's not real. And I'll say, okay, you got 100%, good job. You got 100% also, nice job. You got 100%, and you got 100%, and you got 100%, and you, oh, you didn't do very well, you got a zero. Sorry. And you got 100%, and you got 100%. And then I say, okay, now we're gonna find the average score for the class. Well, how many, uh, what scores did we have? We had two scores, we had 100 and we had zero. And so I'll say, okay, so let's write 100 on the board. We're gonna take the average of 100 and zero. So that's 100 plus zero, that equals 100. And then of course you divide by the number of, whoops, it's not gonna let me highlight that. You divide by the number of scores that you had, which was two. And so that leaves us with an average of 50 points. Does that sound fair? And of course the students all say, no, that's not fair. <clears throat> we, we all got 100, there's no way we should get a 50. And of course the kid who got a zero is pretty happy at this point. <laughs> But this is not a good representative way to calculate the average. So then we decide, okay, we really need a weighted average. Since most of the students got 100, maybe it's not fair to, to do it the way we did. So what you should really do is you should add up all of the hundreds, 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus a zero plus 100 plus 100 plus all the hundreds in the room, which is everybody except for that one kid. And then you should divide by the total number of scores that you added. That's how you calculate an average. The problem is with atoms, when you're adding the mass of each atom, there's so many of them that there would be billions, quadrillions, bigger numbers even than that. And so adding those numbers up wouldn't make sense. It just would take too long. Oops. So uh, since that would take too long, we're not gonna do it that way. Instead, we're gonna do what we call a weighted average based on percents. So you're gonna take your 100 points times 96%, but of course we're not gonna use 96, we're gonna use 0.96, because you convert the percent to a decimal by moving the decimal 
to the left two times, so 0.96. So 100 times 0.96 equals 96. And then you're going to do that for the zero. 4% of the kids got a zero, so that's 0 0.04. So zero times 0 0.04 is still zero. And then you're going to add those two numbers up, and it's 96. And then you ask the class, or I ask the class, uh, is that fair? If I give everybody a 96, is that a fair representation of the average of what you earned? And yes, that's a lot more fair. Still the kid that gets a zero, maybe that's not quite right, but that's okay. So another example would look something like this. Let's say we're trying to find the average atomic mass of an element. Um, let's assume 93% of the oxygen atoms on Earth have a mass of 15. That's probably not accurate. Oxygen's more like 16, but that's okay. 4.2% uh, of the oxygen has a mass of 16 and 2.7 has a mass of 17. So we're going to multiply each mass by its corresponding percent abundance, written as a decimal, and then we're going to add all the products. So we've got 15 times 0.93 equals 13.95, 16 point times 0.042 equals 0 0.672. 0 0.042 is because we had 4.2% in the question up here, right? We move that decimal twice. <clears throat> and then 17 times 0.027 and you add them all up, and it's 15.081. So you should notice that of these three masses, the one that's most abundant is the one that our answer here is closest to. In this case, we said the most abundant one is 15. 15.081 is our mass. And so that's it's going to shift the, the average toward the one that's most common, the most abundant one. Um, also, if you look on the periodic table, these are the numbers that you find in the boxes. You know, there's the atomic number in the box on the periodic table for each element, but there's also the average atomic mass, and it's the weighted average for all of the isotopes that we've ever discovered. And if you look at oxygen, you'll find this one is not correct, and it's because I made up these numbers and they're definitely not right. Okay, I wanna do one more and I'm gonna shift gears here and then we'll do that one and add it in. And then you'll do a couple practice problems on Schoology and that's it for today. Okay, we're gonna do one more practice problem here. Um, I decided to look up different isotopes and their relative abundances and I decided to go with neodymium. You can see behind me here, I've got neodymium. So I'm going to do the math here I'm going to get my calculator out on my cell phone. Let's see. Oops. Come on. Okay, so. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven isotopes of neodymium. The abundances are here. The most common abundance is this one. So neodymium-142 is the most common. Our range is 142 up to 150. So it's going to be a number between 142 and 150. We don't know what it'll be. It'll be maybe pushed toward the 142 and the 144. It looks like it's closer. You know, these abundances are higher, so maybe the average will be closer to these numbers. So, uh, what we're going to do for each of them first <clears throat> is we're going to move our decimal twice for each percent. Even this one, put a zero in there, zero here, and then we're going to multiply across. The best idea is to multiply across and write down the answers, and then we're going to sum the answers and put it down here. I'm going to pause for a second and get back to you on that. Okay, so I've got my problem set up and I've got some of the math done. Um, here's what I did. So I took 142 times 0.274 and I got 38.624. Then I took point, uh, 143 times 0.122 to get that, 144 times 0.238 to get that, and so on and so forth. And now my last step is to add all of these up. Now just a little bit of reminder, if you're doing a weighted average, 
you know that it's going to be weighted toward your most abundant uh, isotopes. So we're going to see these two percents as our largest abundances. So we'd say it's probably going to be weighted toward here somewhere. But we know for sure that the answer is going to be somewhere between 142 and 150. If it comes out to be a number higher than 150 or lower than 142, we've made a mistake. So next I'm going to do the math and then I'll show you what I get. Okay, so the last thing I needed to do then was to add all of these numbers up. And here's what I got. When you add all those up, you get 144.325. And the unit here is going to be U for atomic mass unit. Now, we also can use these numbers to find grams if we're talking about very large quantities of the substance. And that large quantity that we use is called a mole. So we could either say this many atomic mass units, or we could say this many grams if we're talking about a mole of the substance. Okay, so that's it. That's how you calculate average atomic mass. You take the mass times the abundance, but you change the percent into a decimal, and then you write down the answer, and you do that for each mass of each isotope, and multiply by each abundance, and write down the mass, and then you just add up that column of data that you've got. So I have a couple of practice problems for you on Schoology, so please give those a try, and let me know how it goes.